it's still going. <laughs> Micro learning is here to stay. Um, I, I, you know, and it, it, I think it's, it's both reflective of people's busy work schedules, uh, the way people need, uh, need to access trading um, because they just need, they just need the right bit at the right moment. It's not quite learning in the flow of work, right? It, but it's, it's learning in the, I'm going to take, give me five minutes. I'll be right back. Right? That's, that's, that's that space. I think the other thing um, where, where I like to see things, right? I don't want to forget macro learning has a place. It's hot, right? A, a traditional, a, 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 a traditional long form semester long or hour long, right? <laughs> Depending on how, whatever is long in your environment, right? The, the, the new, the structure, here's the, the, the scaffold in which we're going to operate makes the micro learning make sense. Right? Um, and, and makes it stick because I have a frame of reference. Uh, our COVID-19 take precautions course, right? So that is a course of, um, depending on how you deploy it, uh, anywhere from five to 13 uh, micro modules, right? Um, and, um, and the success there has been, the, the, the uptake has been huge. And I've seen people really, really um, do, do a few things with it, right? Some of them deliver it as a bundled piece. Our, our team is going to take all of these, right? But they can take them in bite-sized pieces, right? The other is, I've seen people, right? Just push the one, just the one. Hey, everybody, we need to remember this piece, right? Or we've got coverage on all the other stuff. Here's the one that's important for us now, right? So when you have that combo of a micro and a macro together, they operate really, really nicely. It also allows us, right? I'll just tell you the learning and development side of, of the micro learning success story with this one. It allows us as the science evolves to swap out content, and I owe you a new module, um, to swap out content, right? Where the science evolves, I don't have to change an entire program. I just swap out one four minute video, right? That allows us to a lot of flexibility. And then we've had some clients who take those pieces and they build them into their own macro learning course and they're just using those assets. So I love micro learning for all those little bits and then you can, you can drip them, right? So one a week as a reminder. Um, so there's lots of cool things. Absolutely. I think micro learning is on fire because it's tied to skills and competencies. Skills and competencies have been around in our industry a long time, but it's really difficult to manage, create and manage skills and, and competency profiles. But what's changed is that skill and competencies can be managed by AI and machine learning right now, not as the only way, but as a way to really get acceleration and traction in getting them to work for your organization or leveraging wide models that exist out in the industry. So once you have skills and competencies, then it's easy to tie little pieces of learning, micro learning events to those skills and that's really the foundation of being able to do things like adaptive learning pretests, adaptive learning in general, uh, learning at the moment of need, but at the same time, taking those building blocks of skills and content and building them into learning plans and certifications. So I, I really think that is uh, the direction. If you can break all your big learning down to the smallest fundamental pieces, it's just like biology. You can put those building blocks back together again in different shapes and in different formats. And that's really the, the power of learning in 2020 and 2021 is, is that adaptive learning, not just in terms of what content, but the type and media and the size of the content uh, also uh, to provide learners that, that ultimate flexibility. I'm a real stick in the mud when it comes to gamification. Um, and so I am, um, and, and yet when it's done really elegantly and it doesn't seem like a game, I'm all for it, right? So we talked about my Delta account, right? You better believe it. If Delta tells me I went to 13 cities and the most exciting city I went to was, you know, I don't know, St. Louis, Missouri or something, right? So, right, I'm like, well, gosh, I want to be, I want to be in more exciting places next year, right? Um, or Delta tells me just how many more miles I need to fly in order to make to the next level. I am focused on that. And, and John, between you and me, I have made flight and purchase decisions based on what it takes to make it to the next level, right? So doing that, right, that kind of, that's gamification, that's using game, game mechanics, right? Um, and, and, and I think that's really powerful. I am very into serious games, right? Or games that allow us to reflect um, and, um, and, and, and 
you know, work together collaboratively. Um, when we get to gamification in terms of leaderboards, I tend to, you know, leaderboard, leaderboards or um, games that are uh, recall games or Jeopardy games or whatever, um, those aren't my favorite. I think gamification is fabulous when it's done well. And I think, again, most people want to cut corners and do some easy, simple thing. Just having a leaderboard doesn't matter. Just, just giving points to answer stupid multiple choice questions about your employment law policies doesn't, that, that's not gamifying it. Just adding a Jeopardy game is not gamifying it. And I think that um, people who are gamers get that. People who are willing to invest in learning about gaming get that. I think it had it had a lot of potential, and I just see people not they didn't they didn't do a very good job with it. But um, so I think if if you look at the last say thirty years of educational simulations and serious games, and you look at them everything from the high end like the big medical stuff to sort of the the medium end, which is sort of the more game like stuff, um, to a really low end of sort of the the sort of simple basic blocking and tackling. Um, Sims, I think each of those categories have probably grown a little bit every year for the last 30 years. So I think we're, we see this constant incremental growth, you know, and we sort of hit a little thing like gamification that, that, that I think has created a little bit of a flurry, for example. Um, and that, you know, gamification can be, can be applied to any content basically to improve the interface and make it more engaging. But so I think we, we're sort of this constant creaking up of all these different games uh, you know, slowly and incrementally. Badges, I wish had more traction than it does. I think there's a lot of value around badges and micro credentials and, and the, the ability for all of this to travel with us. And I do hope that there's more momentum gained, on, gained on, uh, in that in the future. Uh, it seems to have lost some steam, but I, I do hope that it regains it because I think there's a lot of value there. Gamification, I think, has, has been there for a while and will continue to be there. What excites me most about uh, gamification and games-based learning related to it um, isn't so much the practice, because I think the practice is, is, is still solid. It's been solid for a while. But the research around it, the credentializing of it, that, that helps us get over this, this hurdle of we're going to use games. You know, I know, I know if in, in the work that I did, if I ever walked into the CFO's office and said, I gotta, we're going to do a training program and we're going to get all the bankers to play a game, the response would have been, no, we're not, <laughs> because I use the word game. Um, but we're, we're, there's more research that's, that's emerging that is credentializing it within our field and broader than our field around the knowledge of how games and gameplay elements can really engage people and, and support a learning and, and skill development program.